Okay, we've got a pretty messy integral today from the MIT integration B. The trouble with it is, it's the fact that we've got nested floor functions. We've got floor function all around it, and we've got floor function on the exponent of the two. And also the fact that we've got log base two in here, there's just kind of a lot of problems. What I wanna do first, because it's gonna be hard to deal with the whole thing, is I'm just gonna focus, I just wanna clean up this one innermost exponent here with the floor function. To do this, we can almost think about like a simpler integral, if we could look at just, just this one right here. Now for something like this with the floor function, a lot of times what I'll do is separate the integral on integer bounds. It doesn't really make sense that way here when we're going from zero to one, it's already just separated by an integer. But what we can do is think about what are the values that we could plug into x to simplify this. The first thing that came to mind is something like, let's just say two cubed, because then log base two of two cubed, exponent properties, the three comes out, this thing's just a three. So now we get the whole expression to be an integer. The trouble is this thing right here, two cubed is eight. We're not within our bounds here, zero to one. What we're gonna need here instead to be between zero and one is values like one half or one eighth or one over 256, which is like one over two to the eighth or two to the minus eight. Because if you take something like this, log base two of two to the minus eight, now we get an integer, it's gonna be negative. In this case, it's gonna be minus eight. So what we wanna to do to break up this integral and generalize it, we're gonna want something in this form of like two to the minus n. So we'll do that. I can write an integral like this. We'll write it as two to the minus n plus one to minus n. So that way these integrals with our x values between these two numbers, like fractions of powers of two, that's gonna reduce here. Because when we put it into this thing, what we're gonna want for it to work well with the floor function is gonna be this lower value, which is gonna be two minus n plus one. And of course, we're gonna have an infinite many number of these integrals, right? This is just gonna be one general one, but we're gonna to have to sum these up. Usually we'll sum from zero to one, we'll just sum this the other way, starting from one. To get two to the minus n to be one, we'll need to start at n equals zero, and then we're just gonna need to sum to infinity. Noticing as this n value goes to infinity, like this is gonna be going to zero right here. But now we can just simplify this part with the floor function, because this is just gonna be an integer, the same way we found this thing to be three. This thing here, if we just use exponent properties again, this whole thing right here is just gonna be the integer minus n plus one. So this is gonna give us our way to simplify this exponent. We didn't do anything with the rest of it, but we can apply this, breaking the integral up this way on this whole thing. We won't have changed this, but our exponent's gonna be reduced to minus n plus one. Okay, so now we just got a little bit of simplification. I mean, I guess not really because all this stuff's more complicated, but we did take care of this exponent. Next, what I wanna do is a u substitution on this right here. I probably should mention that you could do substitutions all the way through this. You could use substitutions to simplify the floor. Just, it's kind of a matter of taste because it's gonna complicate other things. So I decided for me, it wasn't worth it, but you might like it. So give it a try if you wanna do more substitutions. But anyway, I wanna do a substitution just on this part, not the whole thing. I just wanna do the inner part here. The nice thing about this is when you take a derivative, everything over here is a constant. So we get du equal to dx. But actually I want an alternate way to write this just changing the way I write this exponent. So we can also write this as u equal to x minus, take it with, because it's a negative exponent, I can, write it as, I can write it this way. So then we'll go ahead and substitute. We still have our inner, sorry, our outermost sum here. And then I wanna deal with these bounds. This is where the bounds start getting complicated. So first I wanna evaluate x to the two minus n, or I can write this as one over two to the n. So then plugging that in here for our u sub, we're gonna have, if this is our x, we're gonna have one over two to the n minus one over two to the n plus one. I can get a common denominator multiplying in by two. Then what's gonna happen in the numerator, we just have two minus one and it becomes one over two to the n plus one. So that's gonna become this upper bound here. And I'll write it as two to the minus n plus one, putting it back. Next, we'll do the same kind of thing on the lower bound. This, just, this is just gonna become one over, this is gonna be the same thing as one over two to the n plus one. Plug it in here in our u substitution. But what do we notice? This is exactly the same as this. 
So our u value at that lower bound just becomes a zero. Again, du equals dx, so the whole thing becomes kind of simple. It becomes just log base two of u du. But then what we have right here is basically the same thing we saw before. It's just a different limit as we were going from zero to one on that thing that we looked at at the beginning of the problem. So we can do basically the exact same thing on it, breaking it up on those, we wrote out something like one half, one eighth, one over 256. We can break it up the same kind of way again. So now I'll generalize this basically the same way we did before with one little difference. So I'm gonna do two to the minus n, but now I'm gonna introduce another variable. We'll do it minus n plus k. And then for this lower bound, we'll be at two minus n plus k plus one. So just notice when k is zero, then we're breaking it up the exact same way we had it over here. And then we're gonna to need to sum this up again. We're gonna have an infinite number of integrals between zero and this upper bound two to the minus n plus one. So we just need to sum this up. In order to get this first value, we need to start at one, because when k is one, this is gonna be n plus one. Summing this to infinity, as k goes to infinity, this right here is gonna be going to zero. And this is all gonna be within the outer sum, so of course we're creating a double sum here. This one's going from zero to infinity. And then the same exact thing is gonna happen here when we apply the floor on this, because we're gonna be getting integer values coming out of it. If you put like this value in here, the exponent's gonna pop out and this whole thing is gonna become minus n plus k plus one, just reducing this to an integer value. But by doing that, this thing is just gonna be a constant. So our integral is gonna be pretty much nothing. We can take this out front of the integral and we're just integrating a one here. So the integral part we can do really quick. Integrating one, we're gonna get x evaluated between these bounds. That's just gonna be two minus n, k, n plus k minus the lower bound two to the minus n plus k plus one. Let me just clean this thing up really quick. I can write it this way again, kind of going back and forth a little bit. So we have, we can write this as two to the n plus k and this one I can write as two to the n plus k plus one in order to get a common denominator, same exact kind of thing, we multiply in two. So then in the numerator, when we put these together, we're gonna to get two minus one, or just one, over two to the n plus k plus one. But now let's bring our constant back into it that we brought out front of the integral, right? I can just multiply minus n plus k plus one times this and get an expression. So we're gonna be summing up minus n plus k plus one. So all we need to do is we just need to double sum minus n plus k plus one over two n plus k plus one, and then we can finish it off. Okay, calculating the double sum. First of all, let's take the minus sign out front as a constant. I can bring it all the way out here. Next, I wanna do an index change, but it's kind of confusing with two variables. I wanna do it on the end just because if I do, see if I add one here, then we're gonna have our bounds are the same. So I kind of want to do it on the end. So if we if we just reorder this and think about it, I could do it like k plus n plus one. And of course I could do the same thing here. So we'll subtract one on the end variable, do it here as well. So when you do that, this plus one's gonna go away here and here. And then we can just make this a one over here. Split up the fraction, we can split it on the plus sign, right? So I can have one, with the n in the numerator, one with the k. And then for each of these denominators, I can split this up and write it instead as two to the n times two to the k. Same thing here. So doing it like this, it's gonna allow me to break this up into two double sums. And now it might not quite be clear, but these two sums are actually the same thing. You'll notice we have like different constants. Like here, if this sum is in k, then one over two n could come out as a constant. So like for this sum, for example, I could bring, I could bring one over two n out here. And then what's left on the second sum is gonna be k equals one to infinity of just what's left this k over two to the k. But now with this expression here, these sums become interchangeable. You know, you could reverse the order. It's not gonna matter, they're independent. You can multiply them in or factor them out. And so if we did the same kind of thing on this first sum, I mean, you could reverse the order, change the variables, and you get the exact same thing. So since these two sums are the same, we'll just bring a two out front, and we'll just deal with one copy and multiply by minus two. 
Notice I changed my variable here to n just because it doesn't matter. So now we just need to calculate these two sums, but these are two pretty easy sums now. This one right here is just gonna be geometric series. You could write it a different way. Instead of writing it like that, what we could do is write it, just think of it like one half to the n. Then this right here is gonna be the same thing as our geometric series formula, but starting from one. So if this was x to the n, this is gonna be the same. Usually we have one over one minus x, but because we're starting at one, we take the first value, which is gonna be an x, and so we have this. For the convergence on this, we need absolute value of x less than one, but it's no problem because we have one half here. So all we need to do is take one half, plug it into this formula, and we get one half over one minus one half. The denominator becomes one half, and this thing is just gonna be one. So we have the value of this thing, one, but then we multiply it, it's just gonna go away. So this part goes away. Then we just need a formula for this second one. What we can do is we can start with this and take a derivative. So if we take a derivative of this, we get n times x to the n minus one. But for the n minus one part, I'm just gonna rewrite that and break it up and write it as x to the n over x. When you differentiate the right side, you get one over one minus x squared. But then what we can do is we can take this extra x here and just multiply it on both sides of the equation so it goes away here, and then we can bring it on the right side. So then we can use this formula. Let's just take this and rewrite it a little bit. What I can do, getting it into this form, I can write it as n times 1 half n, where again our x is going to be this 1 half value. So we just need to take 1 half and plug it into this formula. What we get is 1 half over 1 minus one half all squared. But one minus one half, that's one half. I can cancel one of these with one of these. We get one over one half, or our value for that is just two. So this thing, this is just gonna be a two. So all I need is just a little bit of space and we can multiply it together. So for my final solution on this, we just multiply two times minus two and we get minus four and that's it. Okay, there you go. I thought that was a really good one from MIT 2025. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.